Good evening. He's coming home, but at a price. Yes, Alan Shearer, who left the North East to find his footballing fortune, has discovered it in his own backyard. Newcastle United are paying a world record £15 million for England's number one striker. Monday, July the 29th, will go down as a great day in Newcastle United's long and famous history. Alan Shearer of Blackburn and England was coming home. At St James's Park, excited fans waited in the rain for a glimpse of their new hero. But Shearer wasn't there. The news had been broken in Bangkok during Newcastle's pre-season tour of the Far East. We have signed Alan Shearer. It's a world record fee that we've paid. And we're delighted, obviously. I couldn't believe it this morning when I heard it. I just couldn't believe it. There's people running around the streets seeing this sign Shearer. And I just, fantastic. It's the biggest, the biggest money sign in the world, so it just puts Newcastle like right on the map, you know, like it's excellent. I used to support Blackburn, but now she's gone to Newcastle, wants to support Newcastle. I would say we're probably sort of 500 shirts in about two and a half hours, which is quite strong. I don't think any other player in the country could have signed for anybody and got a success like this. It's just unbelievable. For Shearer, born in Gosforth, it was a chance to come home and play for the England and Newcastle captain he'd idolised as a youngster. He'd followed United's promotion-winning side of 1984 and was a ball boy on the famous night Keegan made his farewell appearance and retired from football. Shearer escaped the Newcastle net as a teenager, going on to score 135 league goals for Southampton and Blackburn. For England, he confirmed his position as one of the world's top strikers. His five goals made him leading scorer in Euro 96. Jack Hickson was the scout who first spotted his potential. He has a heart like a lion, and he's proved it wherever he's played that he'll go for balls that lesser mortals wouldn't go for. He'll be a sensation here. Within 48 hours of the news that had rocked football, United's new man was on the other side of the world. No, he hadn't been arrested. Singapore police were just making sure the planet's most expensive footballer met up safely with his new teammates. Keegan's team had arrived separately, having just beaten the Thailand national side 2-1 in Bangkok. The players were looking forward to teaming up with their new colleague. I would say he's the best, you know, the best centre forward in the country. Everybody realises that. You know, when Man United are prepared to pay the same money that we have, I think that makes you see his true value. I don't think that 15 million on his head is going to be a problem. I think um, he had the same problem when he went to Blackburn for 3.3, and he coped with that very well. And everyone here at Newcastle is hoping he coaches as well with the 15 million tag as well. My hope is, and, and it, it will never be easy, and there'll be problems along the way, my hope is to try and keep everybody happy, try and keep the squad together, and uh, obviously try and get the mentality of the players a little bit more like the Europeans, say, of the Italian style, where you have big squads, like AC Milan is a very good example, and international players accept the fact that they're not being dropped, that they're being rested. Keegan said Shearer wouldn't play in the Far East, but the striker still received a great ovation before the start of United's match against the Singapore League side. The match itself was always going to happen. Tuesday, August the 6th, 1996, the day that Alan Shearer finally came home. Thousands gathered outside St James's Park to welcome their new hero, and they were in party mood. Inside, the stage was set for Shearer's return. Chairman Sir John Hall, his board and the manager were all on parade. More than 200 journalists, photographers and media crews from all over the world were there to record the event. And Newcastle brewery workers were given the afternoon off the beer. The reception for Shearer came from the heart. It should surprise me with the, with the fans of Newcastle, but the reception that has been given to me, it, it certainly has done. And if any club or any supporters deserve the success, and it's this club, and hopefully I'll, I'll help with the rest of the players to try and bring that to them. We've sold them off time and time again up here. We've built stands with the money, people have said, and we've, we've tried to buy other players to replace them very quickly. That's gone at this club now. He's come here because he knows he's got a great chance of winning something. And we've bought him because we know even with the great players we've got, 
this gamma right is going to improve them. So but what about that £15 million pounds transfer fee? Would that put Shearer under pressure? I don't believe it's pressure. I mean, if, if pressure is going out and enjoying yourself and, and, and being sung by to, to by 30 or 40,000 fans, and as I said, I can only do, go out and do my best, give 110%. If, if that's good enough, then great. If it's not, then I'll hold my hands up and say, well, I tried my best. But uh, money's got nothing to do with it. If money comes my way, then, then that, that's fine. And, uh, I'll, I'll deal with that when it comes along. It's never been a problem in my life, and it certainly won't change me. After all, I'm only a sheet metal worker's son from Newcastle.